वेलकम बैक प्रॉब्लम नाइन डैश सिक्सटीन दिस प्रॉब्लम इज टेकन फ्राम चैप्टर नंबर नाइन दैट इज ट्रस्ट ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन एंड बुक नेम इज मैकेनिक्स ऑफ मटीरियल बाय आर सी हिबलर सो स्टेटमेंट इज डिटरमाइन द इक्वल स्टेट ऑफ स्ट्रेस ऑन एलिमेंट एट द पॉइंट विच रिप्रजेंट द प्रिंसिपल स्ट्रेस इज मैक्सीम इन प्लेन शेयर स्ट्रेस एंड एसोसिएटेड एवरेज नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस ऑल्सो फॉर ईच केस डिटरमाइन द करस्पॉन्डिंग ओरिएटेशन ऑफ द एलिमेंट विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द एलिमेंट शोन and sketch the result on the element so you can see this is the given state of stress where sigma x is 50 mega pascal there is no sigma y in y direction no stress in y direction and this shear stress is 15 mega pascal that is that will be negative so we have to determine the principal stress is maximum in plane shear stress and average stress and then we will have to specify the orientation so let's start with the solution so you can see this is your x this is your y so this face which is usually x plane clear so tau of x in y x is plane and y is the direction so you can see on this plane the y is downward so tau of x y is negative okay so we know that principal stress is principal stresses is equal to sigma 1 comma 2 and that is equal to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus minus sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau of xy whole square okay now you have sigma x sigma y and tau of xy so you can just put the value sigma 1 comma 2 will be equal to 50 plus 0 divided by 2 plus minus 50 minus 0 divided by 2 whole square plus tau of xy which is minus 15 whole square so you will get once when you take first it positive so it will be sigma 1 and sigma 2 will be 50 plus 0 divided by 2 minus 2 will give and with this term it will give you sigma 2 so when you solve this you will get sigma 1 will be equal to 54.2 mega pascal clear and when you take it negative in between these two terms so sigma 2 will be equal to minus 4.15 mega pascal so this sigma 1 and sigma 2 are principal stresses which are the maximum stresses acting on the element now we will uh, specify its location or orientation specify orientation of sigma 1 and sigma 2 so we know that tangent for that we will find theta p1 so we know that tangent of 2 theta p1 or 2 theta p is equal to tau of xy divided by sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 so put the value minus 15 divided by sigma x is 50 minus 0 divided by 2 so from here you will get 2 theta p is equal to tangent inverse minus 0.6 and you will get 2 theta p will be equal to 2 theta p will be equal to minus 30.96 and theta p1 will be equal to minus 15.48 48 degree so this is the location of our orientation when this element is rotated it will uh, uh, at this rotation we will get the principal stresses now we know that let this was your initial x axis and this was your y axis clear and when you rotate it minus 15.8 so your x dash this is theta p and that is minus 15.48 degree so your y axis new y dash will be this one this will be your y dash and if you specify the element it will be like this clear so we do not know or, or which face 
on what, what will be the stress at this phase clear either it is sigma 1 or sigma 2 so for confirmation we will use stress transformation equation stress transformation equation and we will put the value of theta we know that stress transformation equation is equal to sigma x dash which is equal to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 into sine of 2 theta plus tau of xy sine of 2 theta so put the value we will get this sigma x dash is equal to 50 plus 0 divided by 2 plus 50 minus 0 divided by 2 into sine of minus 30.962 theta is this plus tau of xy so tau of minus 15 into sine of minus 30.96 degree so when you calculate it you will get sigma x dash comes out to be 54.2 mega pascal now it means that this sigma 1 is acting on this phase so sigma your sigma 1 is acting on this phase which is positive value clear and your sigma 2 is on this and since this value is negative so it will be compressive clear this is sigma 2 which is 4.15 mega pascal and this arrow shows that this is compressive now you can see that uh, this angle this angle is actually theta p2 and this angle is let's say this angle is theta p2 and this is theta p1 so theta p2 is equal to uh, 90 minus uh, theta p2 is equal to 90 minus theta p1 clear so you can see that uh, this theta p1 which is clockwise so i will write theta p2 is equal to 90 minus 15.48 that will give you 75 74.52 degree clock uh, counter clockwise so it means that if you rotate it in counter clockwise you can also say that this is theta p2 so this will give you the same principal stresses now we will move toward second part which is maximum in plane shear stress so in second part we have to find the maximum in plane shear stress and average shear stress so we know that maximum in plane shear stress is equal to maximum in plane shear stress is equal to sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau of xy whole square under the root so put the value sigma x was 50 minus sigma y is 0 divided by 2 whole square plus tau of xy and tau of xy is minus 15 whole square and we will take the under root so when you calculate it will be 29 point mega pascal and associated average shear stress is equal to sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 and that is 50 plus 0 divided by 2 is equal to 25 mega pascal finding this we will find the orientation of maximum in plane shear stress so we have formula that this tangent of 2 theta s is equal to minus sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 divided by 
factor of x y so put the value minus 50 minus 0 divided by 2 divided by tau of x y is minus 15 so it will be 1.667 so when you calculate 2 theta s and you will have value and if you divide it by 2 so you will get theta s will be equal to 29.5 degree uh, this will be theta s1 r you can say theta s2 is equal to 90 plus theta s1 so 90 plus 29.5 will be equal to 120 degree so this will be equal to theta s2 now you have theta s1 and s2 so you can just specify the orientation of this maximum in plane shear stress and average normal stress so this was initial x this is your y clear so your new x is theta s is 29.5 so you can move toward 29.5 that is positive so it means counterclockwise so theta s1 is 29.5 degree and your y axis will be y dash will be this one clear and if you draw the element so let me draw it if you draw this element like this clear so you can see that you will have a normal stress that will be acting over this let me choose a green color will be like this this average stress is 25 megapascal so it will be like this average clear all these are average normal stress which is 25 megapascal clear and your shear stress will be uh, maximum in shear stress is 29.5 so it will be like this this will be your maximum in plane shear stress which is 29.2 mega pascal okay so this is the orientation of this element now if we combine represent this case in this case and draw the uh, state of stress so you can see that you have this is your initial x x is and this theta is given as uh, this theta which is given as 15.5 clear 15.5 in clockwise so if you move clockwise like this this is your x dash and this is your clockwise 15.5 or 15.48 which is 15.5 degree clear and here you draw the element the face of the element clear and this is the other face clear so here you will be having um, over this phase we have sigma 1 sigma 1 is 54.2 so I will represent 54.2 over this phase it will be like the positive value so it will be like this there and over this phase we have sigma 2 this is sigma 1 and sigma 2 is minus so it will be compressive so sigma 2 and maximum in plane shear for maximum in plane shear this normal stress over this surface will be average stress this is sigma average and this angle will be 29.5 degree and you will be having a sh in plane shear stress over this surface will be like this it will be like this this is tau max in plane you can just pick the value sigma average is 25 megapascal sigma 1 is 
4.2 sigma 2 is 4.15 megapascal compressive and that was all about this problem 9-16 in which we have calculated the principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 and their orientation and specify the orientation on element and in second part we have find out the maximum in plane shear stress and average stress and their orientation and specify on the element and by combining these two you can also specify the state of stress on the element i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest video if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching